Hello, and welcome to this short video about who CLEEPS are and about the guidance and resources that we produce to support practical work in your lessons. As always, do check the CLEEPS website for the most up-to-date version of the resources and guidance. CLEEPS are a membership organisation who support practical science, design and technology and art in schools and colleges. All of our advice and guidance is available to our members through the CLEEPS website. Our advisors and technicians have many years of classroom teaching and technician experience, ably supported by our office staff. The vast majority of state and independent schools in England, Wales and Northern Ireland are members of CLEEPS. We are funded by your employer, usually your local education authority, academy trust, or directly by your school or college. Our ultimate aim is to support all teachers and technicians in providing safe, high quality practical work for students in schools and colleges. As CLEEPS is a membership organisation, our primary focus is on supporting teachers and technicians in their work. If you have any questions, you can contact us via the helpline on the website, by email or by phone. Perhaps practical isn't working, or you have one that you need to do, but you're worried about an aspect of the safety. Perhaps you're looking for a practical idea to develop a skill or exemplify a concept or collect some data. Or perhaps you have a more general query about practical work. We love to talk with teachers and technicians to help solve these problems or to suggest a way of doing the practical work you want to do with your students. If we can't answer your question straight away, we will find the answer and get back to you. Our contact details are included at the end of the video and available from our website. The CLEEPS website contains a vast array of advice, guidance and resources and can be accessed at www.cleeps.org.uk. The left-hand menu shows the wide range of publications that we produce. We continue to update and develop these year on year. Perhaps the most useful function on the website is the search function, highlighted here in yellow. Type in the name of an activity, a concept or a substance that you're interested in, and the search function will return results in groups of 10. Much of our guidance is tagged, so you will see closely related documents when you click through on the search result. Anyone can search the CLEEPS website, but only those in member organisations can access all of the documents. Speak to your head of science or your technicians for your login details. Running a science practical is arguably one of the most complex activities that you will carry out in a school lab. There is much more to think about than you're beyond manipulating the equipment and materials and achieving useful results. Our successful science practical guide, document G30, covers all the aspects that you will need to consider when planning and carrying out practical work. This includes risk assessment, putting in requisitions to technicians, managing the actual lesson, timing of the activity, how equipment is presented to students, how practical instructions are delivered, and the all-important clearing up. The role of demonstrations is also discussed, including some advice on how to develop and extend your skills as a demonstrator. The appendix to this document includes a summary table of practicals and demonstrations that require particular attention and the problems that can occur. The two main sources of guidance and support for subject-specific practical work are practical procedures and guides. Guides come in different forms, from providing a central reference to a group of resources on a particular area, to discussing the science behind an activity in greater depth. For example, as shown here, the Microbiology Guidance Index, Guide GL269, is an index of the wide range of documents available to support schools carrying out microbiology activities. These range from the preparation of agar plates and broths to aseptic technique and to carrying out the practical activities themselves. As mentioned in the first part of this video, the easiest way to find these resources is by using the search function on the CLEEPS website. If you're not looking for a particular resource, but want some guidance on a topic, search the website for a keyword or phrase. All the guidance is tagged and appropriate guidance will appear in the search results. Shown on the right here is our guide on food tests, documents GL18. This guide provides practical instructions on carrying out all of the common food tests and pictures showing expected outcomes. One of the most useful aspects of the CLEEPS guidance is that our procedures have been developed and tested by our experienced advisors and technicians in our lab. We are therefore confident that they will produce the expected outcomes. All of the CLEEPS advisors and technicians have worked in schools. They bring in a detailed understanding of what works in schools and colleges. Uniquely, you can contact us via email or phone if the activity isn't working for you and can usually discuss this 
with the person who wrote the guidance. More details about contacting Cleeps are included at the end of this video. Practical procedures are self-contained pieces of guidance for a particular practical activity. They include model risk assessments, materials and methods with control measures, often including pictures to show particular steps in the procedure and the expected outcomes, as well as technical notes. Increasingly, the practical procedures are accompanied by a video showing how key aspects of the activity work. There are more details on our videos later. Shown here are two biology practical procedures, investigating the effects of antimicrobial chemicals, document PP50, and investigating the effects of temperature on amylase reaction, document PP71. Our practical procedures do not follow the requirements of the particular exam board, and so are generally applicable to students studying any qualification. You may wish to adapt the procedures to fit with your selected learning outcomes, your students, or the equipment that you have available. Remember that the model risk assessment is for the practical procedure as written. As such, any changes that you make to the procedure will require a reassessment of the risks as part of your overall risk assessment. Adjustments may then need to be made to the control measures recommended in the document. It is important to note that practical procedures are not student worksheets. While some sections may be copied into worksheets, for example, the method, it is not appropriate for the whole document to be given to students. There are a wide range of practical procedures available for chemistry, including many alternatives to the so-called traditional methods for completing activities. A classic example of this is the acid thiosulfate reaction, often called the disappearing cross reaction. This activity provides useful data for determining the rate of this reaction and is commonly used in pre and post 16 courses. The main risk with this activity is the potential for the large scale release of toxic sulfur dioxide. Practical procedure PP41 describes three methods for carrying out the reaction on a smaller scale to that usually suggested. The procedures also include details of a stop bath, which neutralizes the acid and stops the further release of sulfur dioxide once the reaction has reached its endpoint. Practical procedure 141 takes the method further by showing how to carry out the reaction in a simple water bath, allowing the collection of data at a range of temperatures. Sample data is included with outline information on how to process the data and calculate the activation enthalpy for this reaction. Another range of documents available for chemistry are the practical extract or PX documents. These include brief details on practical activities that can be carried out with particular chemicals. These documents only contain summary guidance. Full model risk assessments are not provided, so the guidance should be seen as a starting point if you are planning to carry out these activities. The example shown here is for activities that can be carried out with magnesium and its compounds, document PX59. You can see that the guidance can run from a couple of lines to half a page, depending on the activity. Over time, some of this guidance will be converted into full practical procedures. CLEEPS is well known for our development of microscale techniques, and several of the practical procedures use this approach to practical work. Document TL18 is a useful starting point for understanding the wide range of activities that you can carry out using microscale chemistry, including developing apparatus and using techniques in class. Searching the CLEEPS website, with the term microscale, we'll find many relevant documents, including MECI guides and practical procedures. For physics, there is a wealth of specialist guidance, including practical procedures and guides. Two recent examples are shown here. Document PP65 details how to determine the speed of sound using a digital storage oscilloscope or with the Arduino kit. This activity could be used with students throughout the secondary age range, and could also form the basis for an interesting student investigation. Guide GL295 provides a good example of the benefits of collaboration between schools and CLEEPS. We were asked by a teacher whether it was safe to make and use a vacuum ping pong cannon. Our advisors and technicians researched and developed a suitable practical setup and full details are now available in this guide. Another key resource that we produce are videos covering topics as diverse as glass working, aseptic technique, doing reactions on a microscale, and making equipment like the simple cloud chamber. These videos are freely available on our YouTube channel, although the detailed written guidance is only available to our members. The best way of accessing Cleeps videos on YouTube is to start with the web address shown here. 
be aware that there are other videos on YouTube that include clips in the name or description. Only those videos posted on our YouTube channel have been created by Keeps advisors and technicians. All the videos are also tagged on the Keeps website, so they will appear as a link under the relevant documents, such as guides and practical procedures. As I hope you have seen, Cleeps offers a diverse range of support, guidance and resources. Cleeps is here to help you, whether you are an early career teacher, a technician or a head of department. If you can't find what you're looking for or you would like to talk through an idea or a problem, contact us by email, via the website or on the phone. We normally respond to helpline requests within two days. If your query is urgent, then contacting us by phone is the best route. Thank you for watching this video.